So when we talked about the strength of rock in terms of its failure, we, we didn't talk about, we didn't, uh, oops. We didn't really talk of any, any um, effect of rock strength and isotropy. So a lot of rocks, like particularly shaley rocks or finely laminated sandstones or foliation planes and metamorphic rocks lead to rock strength and isotropy, okay? And that's the fact that, you know, there's some inherent bedding plane in the rock, bedding planes in the rock, or small flaws that, you know, have a directional dependence in small flaws in the rock, okay? And so these lead to one conceptualization would be that the rock has two strengths, right? The intact strength, which of course would be the case if you were to load the rock at 90 degrees to the bedding plane, right? In that, in that case, you're not going to activate any slip on these little flaws that are in there. And in that case, it's like the rock is fully intact. It's, it's as if the flaws don't exist. Okay. But if we were to load the rock in a way, and, and so you know the intact strength would be your just your normal strength as if there were no flaws at all. Okay. And then if you were to then say rotate the geometry such that now you're loading the rock in a way that's actively causing slip on those micro faults, those little tiny uh, faults then you could think of the rock as some SW, some weaker strength, okay? That's associated with loading in a direction that activates those flaws, okay? And so then there's, you know, one theory that, you know, allows you to essentially show the, the, the change in the, uh, well, principal stress, um, maximum principal stress as a function of the minimum principal stress using this um, weaker rock strength, and it ultimately leads to some some uh, sort of criterion like this, where in some region, in this case between you know like 45 degrees and, and uh, what 75 degrees, then you have this reduction in strength essentially because you're activating those faults, okay? So what does this do to breakouts? Or what does this do to wellbore stability problem? When you have a rock that has uh, a significant amount of anisotropy, if you remember from Last week, when we looked at the televiewer, you just had sort of two dropouts associated with the two lobes that were occurring 180 degrees from each other, right? Well, in this case, it, it's hard to read, see, but in this case, there's something like four. So there's a dropout here, 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 and here. So it's sort of an indication of like f maybe four lobes as opposed to the two that typically appear on either side, right? And so, so you know, if you if you were to, this is the actual interpretation of the data. So if you were to actually say sketch the original wellbore diameter like that, then you might idealize these breakouts as a lobe here and a lobe there, something like that. Sort of an, as an idealization, and you can explain this from the anisotropy, right? So your overall wellbore shape, something like this. Okay, and so you can you can explain this from the anisotropy. And it has to do with the fact that so if you remember. From our picture from the Kirsch, equa Kirsch equations, you know, so here's here's the direction of SH max. Then you sort of remember we had these sort of isocontours of stress 
and they bunched up. The stress is bunched up at SH min up here, and that you know, led to a stress intensity and ultimately a failure or breakouts. That's, that stress intensity would lead to breakouts that occur here. But in this case, this, this direction of SH max is also favorable to slip on the planes. So if you have these, these are meant to indicate bedding planes. So the idea here is that this angle is something like 60 degrees, or, well, I guess it would be this angle, this angle. No, that, that, that's right, the way I drew it the first time. But this angle here, some, something like 60 degrees. So it means along these directions, you're going to be activating those faults and causing slip, which would then lead to failure in, this, in these lobes here. So when you have a anisotropic rock, you can get these sort of characteristic breakouts. 